All right. The, uh, the next one here is vapor pressure and volatility, okay? These two things actually go hand in hand, okay? So let's first define vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is any pressure that's created when you start to evaporate uh, gases from a liquid, okay? So the pressure that can, you can form from that is called vapor pressure. Now, the result of having a vapor pressure is how volatile something is. Now, usually we think of something that's volatile, meaning very physical or violent, okay, like a volatile movie or a volatile person. But in the chemistry and physics world, volatility really refers to how easily something evaporates, which if you, that kind of makes sense because things that evaporate really easily tend to have low flash points, so things that evaporate really easily tend to make into gas form easy, which means they can explode easier. So that's why you get that mix of connotations between explosive in, in nature for volatility versus what it really means, which is just evaporation. So if you can create a lot of vapor pressure, you're going to be very volatile, okay? So if you evaporate really quickly, you can create a lot of pressure from the gas, which means you're evaporating fast, so you're a volatile liquid. Now, um, if we have a substance, when it evaporates, it has to break free of these IMFs, okay? So if you think about that, how will these two things be related to each other, okay? Um, in terms of our vapor pressure and volatility. Well, the easier it is something to evaporate must mean that it's easier to break free. So it must mean it has lower intermolecular forces, okay? So once again, we get this direct relationship where the stronger the force, now in this case, sorry, not direct relationship, we get an inverse relationship here actually for the first time. We end up having this inverse relationship. So the stronger the force, the better it is at holding things together, which means it won't evaporate very well. The vapor pressure will be low and it will be a less volatile substance, okay? So let's look at water again. Water is a very small atom. Water should be a gas at room temperature. Water should evaporate extremely fast because it's such a small little atom. However, it has very strong hydrogen bonds. So because of its strong intermolecular forces, water ends up having pretty low vapor pressure and pretty low volatility. It doesn't evaporate very well. It still will evaporate, but just not very fast. Um, something called cyclohexane, which is in our picture here, cyclohexane is a nonpolar substance. And even though it has six hydrogens or six carbons in it, it's a much heavier molecule than water. Because it has only London dispersion forces, the forces holding it together are much, much weaker. So because those forces are weaker, it's going to evaporate faster. Okay? So here is uh, basically two pictures. Here's a starting point. Here's water. Here's cyclohexane. And here's water and cyclohexane again. Just a simple little picture. And I did put some color in here so you can kind of see the, where the water levels are at easier. If you look, initially they're both the same. And then after a um, certain amount of time, uh, the water has changed a little bit, it's evaporated a little bit, but the cyclohexane has definitely evaporated more, okay? So we're seeing that the one with less intermolecular forces evaporates faster, okay? So you're going to end up having more vapor pressure and more volatility if you have weak intermolecular forces. So we get that inverse relationship for vapor pressure and volatility. All right, guys, we're going to end that stuff here.